Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Our guest in studio today is Scott Spackey, certified addiction treatment counselor in private practice and has been for upwards of uh, 12, 13 years now. He's also an author author of the book, A Stone's Throw, Memoir of a Dope Fiend. And he's in studio today with us to discuss how to recognize when a particular addiction recovery plan is or will be ineffective and why it will be ineffective. We'll also touch on the importance of matching treatment, not only to a specific drug, but also to a specific personality as well. Welcome to the program, Scott. Thanks for having me back, Neil. I always enjoy talking to you. Thank you so much. You know, you've uh, you've got several books out, uh, one of which being uh, A Stone's Throw, Memoir of a Dope Fiend. Intriguing title. Talk about the book. Why did you write it and who did you write it to, Scott? I wrote that basically to purge my soul. I did not realize before I wrote it that I was carrying around a lot of weight in my spirit. Mm-hmm. And as I started to even write the first handful of words for that book, I felt like somebody had removed a demon from my spirit that I was being purged and it was liberating and I was addicted to that. And so it was very powerful. And so I surrendered into it and it was just something that you could say in a sense, I had to do it. I couldn't, I was, I was in such an unrestful, unpeaceful state of being that the only thing that solved it. And I did not know what was causing me this spiritual unrest until I started to write that book. And the moment I started to all of this, all of these feelings of fulfillment and relief took place. Now, you're, you're in recovery as we speak, and you've been clean for upwards of 20 years. You talk about uh, drug use and recovery in your books. Talk about how, um, how, you've been, how some of your books have been received when you talk so descriptively about your use, your, the acquisition of these drugs. I mean, it is the memoir of a dope fiend. That's right. Well, the project addiction stuff, that's a little bit, you know, that's, that's more the, um, more the clinical or more professional areas. I get a lot of criticism from the recovery fields because they feel that I'm being a little bit too, too, um, detailed about those things almost, you know, that it, that it really doesn't need to be that graphic. And I disagree. Now, as far as the stone so is concerned, well, I can tell you that that book has been nominated for three awards and won all three. So wow. It has a very powerful effect on people, and it's liberating. Again, for me, when I hear somebody saying to me, every once in a while I get to meet or talk to a reader. One stopped me in the airport mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago and said, oh, my God, you're Scott. You know, I'm just reading your book. And so what's amazing about that is when they share with me that it evokes their own darkness. And I know that when it's evoked, that it helps purge theirs too. And that is one of the most satisfying. Then I realized why I actually wrote it, that there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to purge that darkness of their own. And the stone so helps them do that vicariously through my experience. In writing this book, did you find, um, I guess, pathways into actually discovering who your patients are, their specific personalities, and that gives you maybe an edge up over facility-based uh, addiction treatment when it comes to offering long-term uh, treatment? You know, I've never actually thought about that. That's an interesting question. I never thought about how a stone throw has played a role in my perception of the work that I do with other people. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that when I wrote it, and as it continues to live, I went into what we would call the creative tunnel. I completely absorbed and immersed myself in that tunnel and I created viscerally and from the gut and from the heart. And so honestly, beyond the words that I was actually writing, what I was expressing in that moment, I didn't really think beyond that of who was going to read it and what it was going to do. I just was trying to purge that soul. So now that you mention it, I would imagine it probably does. But I think more importantly, well, I don't know about more importantly, but I think importantly is that other people read it and it touches them. And so while it may not change or have much of an influence on my perception of addicts that I work with, I think it definitely has a perception of the, of helps them get a perception of themselves on a much, much broader spectrum and of me too when they're working with me. Now, is there a website associated with a stone's throw? Absolutely. A stone's dash throw.com. A stone show was written and based on several different levels. Mm -hmm. So there's the kind of surface level where it's a a really interesting tale and there's a lot of interesting things there, but there's a whole lot of what you could, could, you could categorize as like what you call inside joke kind Mm -hmm. of private secrets. There's a little, there's, there's a lot of things in there that are kind of underlined in there. And 
they're even hidden on the website. So there's all kinds of little clues, and a lot of people get them right away. They they understand them and get them right away. But a lot of people don't necessarily. So there's a whole lot of like inside jokes explained and kind of explored on the website. So I've had a lot of fun with the website. It's basically kind of like again, Stone Store stands independently, completely on its own. But if you want to take it to another dimension, another degree, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the website that does it. For example, the final climax chapter, Torsional Waves. Most people don't even know what a torsional wave is. Well, it's on the website and explains that, and it not only is a fun thing to learn about, it's pretty for profound, but it also takes that very deep and profound and intense chapter and makes it even deeper and more profound. Were you in private practice when you wrote this book, or is this something that uh, came about after you began your private practice? It was before. A Stone's Throw was first written the first final draft of it was completed before I ever became a counselor back in 1999 and 2001 writing that book literally almost took my life Uh I almost died I had a very severe very intense relapse episode Mm -hmm. that that was triggered from writing that book because I was spilling it all out Mm -hmm. and that event almost took my life and a whole lot of other things Mm -hmm. and so basically I was so terrified that I didn't feel like I could interact with a stone throw authentically and honestly without absorbing myself into that degree. And so I set it aside and it went dormant for a long time. And I thought that someday maybe I'll resurrect it because I did was very proud of it. It was already getting a lot of recognition. Publishers were reaching out to me, but I just didn't feel like I could interact with it and still survive it physically, mentally, and also be a parent and a partner. And so I sat it aside and it sat there for a long time until I was resurrected from my accident in 2013. I was killed and I was resurrected on the scene by paramedics. That event changed a lot of things the way that I see them. I was already about 80% through with Project Addiction. And as I crystallized Project Addiction and Project Addiction Counselor, it kind of occurred to me that it was time to resurrect a stone throw and release them all three together. And so it was resurrected. And sure enough, I'm stable enough mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. The elements that are in my life now, I'm, I wouldn't say immune, but I'm, I'm pretty impervious now to the, the old me. I mean, I'm, I'm very strong and very, very stable now. So I took that chance and resurrected it again, and I, and I really enjoyed doing it. And where can our listeners get a copy of A Stone's Throw, Memoir of a Dope Fiend? Yes, it's also in audio, in print, and ebook, and anywhere that you buy a book, whether it's Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Book Baby, anywhere that you buy a book, it's available there. And again, I like the audio version. I narrated it, I, I read it myself, and so I went into the studio, and it was produced, and all those kinds of things. And I'm not saying that I'm the best audio narrator. I'm not. I'm not a professional voiceover guy at all. But I think what people enjoy about that is they say, you know what, Scott, maybe you're not the, maybe you're not a professional narrator, but that's kind of what I like about it. I like the fact that it's you reading it, and I know that it's really you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Mr. Scott Spackey, certified addiction treatment counselor who's been in private practice for more than 12 years. He's the author of A Stone's Throw, Memoir of a Dope Fiend, and uh, transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.